Welcome everyone, thank you for joining us today. We are live on location and our special guest is someone who was born in a very small village in Africa who came to America and achieved, yes, the American dream. And he's gonna share his story and how he did it and how you too can go after your own dream. Please welcome Mr. Paul LaJoy. Thank you so much, Paul, for being here. Thank you, Maria. I'm, I really, uh, I'm excited about this opportunity to talk to you. Well, first of all, let me tell you, I love your name, LaJoy, and I wanted to take it, but you wouldn't allow it, so. <laughs> so, but you do bring joy wherever you go, so thank you for that. Right, my pleasure. Well, let's talk about your, your early beginnings, because you were born in a very a small village in Africa to a poor mother, and you are a very successful entrepreneur today. So please uh, share your story. Yeah, I was born in Cameroon, and most people, when you talk about Cameroon, they don't know where that is. Right. But Cameroon is on the east side of Nigeria. So you say Nigeria, everybody knows what Nigeria is. Yes. Okay, and of course, people, when you hear about Africa, or you hear the name Africa, people, the, con the connotation is basically poverty and all that stuff. Correct. So yeah, sure. And I am an example of that. So I was born in a little village, as you said, in Cameroon, and to a poor mother. And the only time I really saw someone that was supposed to be my father was when he was dead drunk. Uh. This guy would be so drunk, and he would come in, and he would just, oh my goodness, be rowdy. And at some point, at the age of about 10, I almost, I was on the verge of chopping his head off, you know, because I thought, man, I don't see you. The only time you come is when you are coming to give the havoc to my mom. To right, my when you're abusive, right. Terribly abusive, you know, and he was never there and stuff like that. Uh, and I remember when I was growing up, you know, uh, again, we had to, as a kid, I mean, there was no kindergarten or anything like that. And so you start by going to primary school, mm -hmm. okay, which is elementary school here in America. You know, it, at the school is far away, so you have to walk. I'm five years old, I walk 10 miles to go to school. Holy cow. Early in the morning, you get up at six o'clock, and it's kind of cold, it might, people think they're tropics, but this is a village, so you have trees all over the place, so it's very cold. So you get up at six o'clock, your mom cooks breakfast, breakfast for you, and then now you walk 10 miles to go to school. You arrive in school, and guess what happens? The teacher beats you up. Why? You got two guys who are bigger than you, and you, one will hold you here, on your hands, and another one will hold your feet. They'll stretch you out like this, and you get this cane, hit you up, beat you like crazy. Why were they beating you? Well, because you're late. You're five Just because late. you're five minutes late, five minutes you are late. five, six years old, yes. walking to school from home, yes. 10 miles, right. exhausted, right. and they beat you for being exactly. late. Exactly, yeah. That's not empowerment, And I would it? tell my mom that this guy is really abusing me, and he'll have the guts to say, he is because I love him. I said, what, what kind of love is that? Mm -hmm. You know, my mom, poor mother, loves a kid like crazy. She will bribe the guy. You know, every time he passes by our village, she'll get corn, you know, because that's what we grew, right? Corn, yeah. Corn, maize. She'll harvest that and give him a, a few <laughs> so that he will not beat me up. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. He'll <laughs> doing that. But that did not deter me. You know, that did not deter me. That was the only school I could go to, you know, and was that, that was really bad. But I worked very hard, and I, I graduated from elementary school or primary school. I went to secondary school. Okay, the secondary school was really not good either, but it's away from, from uh, the village, you know, so you don't have to walk those many miles anymore. Mm -hmm. But you are, I remember the secondary school, the, the accommodation was so terrible. I mean, just, I can't even describe it on camera, but it was just so terrible, you know. I mean, I, I, I don't want to go too far on this, but it was terrible, you know. Uh, at least for the first year. The second mm -hmm. year, I, I couldn't stand that, those squalid conditions. Yeah. So, I, and I, I started very hard, so I wanted, I told the principal, can I go into a dormitory, you know, so. A dormitory, I, yes, yeah. So I was able to go to the dormitory, and things got better. When go back to the village, you know, there's one thing I would like to point out, you know, where um, my mom, like I said, she was a single mother, you yes. know, with five kids. Okay, my siblings never didn't live at home, lived with some relatives, okay. Um, I remember vividly when my uncle, my uncle, my mom's uh, brother, mm -hmm. uh, put her up and myself in the, like the in-law quarters, you know. And uh, at some point he had to, I think he got so mad, I, and I don't remember, I don't know exactly what happened, he had to throw, throw us out, you know. And so another um, member of the village 
had peed on us, and of course we were living in his house. And he w wasn't living there. And, but this house it was a thatch house, a thatch roof, you know. Right. So in, you know, in the tropics you have torrential rains, uh. and whenever it rains heavily, guess what happens? I mean, you got this. The rains have been through the perforations, you know, and, and we're drenched. My mom and myself were there, we're drenched it's in this rain, your house. you know, and, and we're crying. I mean, she was crying. I mean, she was crying. Mostly she was crying. I know I had pity on her and I said, you know, how can I help her? And this house was so infested with cockroaches. I'm so lucky that I, I don't have leprosy or something like that. Mm. But that's the kind of upbringing that I had. But all those things more than me. So, like, my second book uh, that I wrote when I was in Taiwan, I, it's, it's like the masterpiece of, of my, my background and what I, my dream is for the future. You know, so all those, even the hard times that I went through actually helped me, molded me. I was so determined. Mm -hmm. I was so determined to be successful. So I got a scholarship to go to, uh, LM, to secondary school, and then I, I, I excelled very well in secondary school. And then from second school, I got a scholarship to go to high school, an excelling high school. And then I had a scholarship to go to university. Now, I'm in university in England, where the wow. Cameroon government is one that took care of me, you know, uh, in terms of even the, the passport, the flight to England, you know, and my, uh, my studies there in England, you know. So basically, those things, those formative years molded me to who I am today, you know. So yeah. you worked hard, you were determined to help your mother, yeah. help your situation, and you started to have these dreams because you knew that you were achieving. So from England, is that where you ended up in Taiwan from there? Yeah, so I, now I'm in England, you know, and uh, of course more advanced than Cameroon, you know, and uh, the Cam Cameroon government sent me over there to do radio, film, and television production, to study ra radio, film, and television production, and then be able to go back as a cream of the crop you know, to actually produce television in Cameroon. And so uh, while doing that, I, I came across the four dragons of East Asia, Taiwan, Singapore, uh, Hong Kong, and South Korea. Mm -hmm. And so I was very attracted to those countries, and so I ended up in Taiwan. When I, I, I got to Taiwan, Taiwan is just the size of the state of Ohio, but Taiwan at that time was uh, among the, the, the uh, 14 largest economies in the world. Mm. So I was so astounded by the success of Taiwan. You know, and that now can how can we actually replicate that in Africa, in Cameroon? Yeah. Where I mean, Taiwan, 50 years prior to when I got there, was poorer than Cameroon, poorer yeah. than most uh, countries in Africa. But now you see Taiwan propel itself. So Singapore, which is a, a city state, right. South Korea, all these countries that were very poor and they're very small. They don't have the natural resources to propel themselves to heights great heights. It's phenomenal know. what you've done and you ended up in the United States. You created a very successful real estate investment and brokerage firm and absolutely amazing and we're so proud of you and thank you so much for being here today and mm -hmm. sharing your story to inspire other people to go mm -hmm. after their dreams. Right, right, exactly, yeah. Thank you.